Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the spinal cord. We're gonna do some labeling, so go through some anatomy, but also go through the function of the spinal cord. So what does it do with sensory information coming in from the body, and what does it do with motor information coming out? All right, first thing is, when we look at the spinal cord, it begins just underneath the brain stem. Now, there's multiple segments of the spinal cord. We've got the cervical area. Cervical means neck. We've got the thoracic. We've got the lumbar. We have the sacral. And we have the coccygeal. These are the different segments going from top to bottom of the spinal cord. Now, each of them have spinal nerves associated with them. So these are nerves that shoot out and away or come back in, and it's, there's one either side, so they're paired. So the cervical region has eight spinal nerve pairs, the thoracic has 12, the lumbar has five, the sacral has five, and the coccygeal has one spinal nerve pair. If you add them all up, that ends up being 31 pairs of spinal nerves going down your entire spinal cord. Now what I've got here is a cross section of a spinal cord. And so basically transverse section, we're looking into it bird's eye view. You can see that you've got on either side, two nerve roots coming out of the spinal cord and it connects up to a single spinal nerve. Now there's one there and one there and that is the spinal nerve pair. Like I said, there's 31 of these pairs. Now I've basically taken, because you can do a cross section at the cervical or thoracic or lumbar region and the spinal cord itself looks slightly different. So I've amalgamated them and this is a generalized view of what a spinal cord looks like so we can label and then talk about its function. All right, first point I wanna go through is this. When we have a look at this nerve here, this spinal nerve, you can see that there's two that come into one. All right, there are only very specific neurons that move through that spinal nerve and very specific neurons that move through that spinal nerve. But before we go through that, we need to know of this spinal cord, what's the front, what's the back? Well, firstly, this is the back. So we call this dorsal, right? This is the dorsal region. This is the front, so we call this ventral. Now we've orientated ourselves and we can say that this nerve at the back is called the dorsal nerve root. So we can label that and we can call it the dorsal nerve root dorsal nerve root. All right, now this dorsal nerve root carries very specific information, carries sensory information. So what's sensory information? Information about touch, information about pain or temperature or pressure, anything that's coming from our body that wants to go up to the brain to let it know what's happening about the internal and external environment. That's sensory information and every bit of sensory information that's going to the brain is carried through the dorsal nerve root. So that means information's coming up here like that. And it goes to the dorsal nerve root. All right, you can see there's a bump here. This bump is a ganglion and it actually houses the cell body of the sensory neuron. Now, remember, you can have neurons that look like that which is called unipolar, where it's a cell body, an axon, and then the terminals. But you can also have what's called multipolar neurons, where, or bipolar neurons, where it looks like there's two axons coming from the cell body. So sensory neurons are predominantly bipolar neurons. Now, this information that's coming in wants to now enter the spine. Oh, before I say that, let's label this. This is the dorsal root ganglion. And even though I said a ganglion, or at least this ganglion houses the cell body of sensory neuron, the general definition of a ganglion is any area that houses cell bodies of neurons outside of the central nervous system. So here's the central nervous system, the spinal cord and brain, right? This, is the, this nerve root is outside of it. So it's called a ganglion because it's housing a cell body. All right, this sensory bit of information wants to come into the spinal cord, ultimately wants to get to the brain, but before it does that, it needs to jump into this part of the spinal cord. Now, this butterfly-shaped area, or this H-shaped area, is all gray matter. 
Now, gray matter is where one neuron speaks to another neuron. This is where cell bodies in the spinal cord are housed or where synapses are, okay? So I'm gonna write here, gray matter, this is where we have synapses. The white matter is all this area outside of it, okay? This is all white matter, and they're simply the highways. All they're doing is carrying axons that go up to the brain or axons that come down from the brain. So white matter carry axons, and they're the highways. That's how I like to think about it. All right. So this bit of sensory information is coming in. It goes into the gray matter first. Now, this bit of gray matter looks like a horn and it's at the back in the dorsal area. So it's called the dorsal gray horn, unsurprisingly. Dorsal gray horn. And this dorsal gray horn is going to have sensory information synapsing. Now, if it synapses or comes into the dorsal gray horn, in this area here, it's carrying cutaneous sensory information. So for example, information about skin and organs. If a sensory neuron comes into this area here, it's also carrying information about skin and organs, but also muscles as well. And if it carries information in to this area, it's carrying information about proprioception. Now your question may be, what the hell is proprioception? Proprioception is your body's ability to know where you are in your own space. I can close my eyes and touch my nose. Now I can't see my nose, I can't feel my nose on my face, but I know where it is. And this is because you've got certain receptors in joints and in muscles that can tell your brain how flexed or extended that joint is. Therefore telling you where you are in your own space. That's proprioception. Now as this sensory information comes in and goes into the dorsal gray horn into its particular area, which we call lamina, all right, it needs to go up to the brain. So it needs to jump into white matter. And white matter, because they carry the axons, they're the highways, needs to go in and up. So if it's carrying information that's destined to the cortex of the brain for you to be consciously aware of it, about touch, it's jumping in via this area of white matter. This area of white matter, known as tracks, tracks go up, tracks go down, that's T-R-A-C-T-S, this information that's going up to the brain, right? This is carrying information about fine touch, fine touch, vibration, and fine touch, vibration, and proprioception. So if somebody was doing this and you wanted to be aware of it, sensory neuron jumps into the dorsal gray horn, jumps into the white matter, this particular pathway here, and goes up to the brain for you to be consciously aware. So this is conscious. But what if it's unconscious information? What if your brain needs to know about it, but you don't need to be consciously aware of it? You may be thinking, what scenario does this occur? Well, this is a lot of proprioception. So for example, you can stand on one foot. And it's not because you're consciously contracting and relaxing certain muscles, it's because your brain is doing it from proprioceptive unconscious information going up and then a motor signal going down. So what about unconscious proprioceptive information? Well, that's being sent up via this area of white matter here. That's all going up via that area. And this is, called, this is unconscious proprioceptive information. Now, this pathway here is called the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway. I've done an entire video on it, so check it out. This pathway here is called the spinocerebellar pathway because it's going from the spine straight to the cerebellum. That's that little brain that sits underneath your cerebrum. And the last bit of information that we want to send to the brain is information about temperature and pain. Information about temperature and pain comes up from that area of white matter. And this is sending information about temperature and pain. 
So this is where all our sensory information travels up via the highways of our white matter. Gets to the brain, you either become aware of it or you don't become aware of it. But either way, the information gets to the brain. This is sensory. So to summarize sensory information with the spinal cord, a sensory neuron comes in via the dorsal nerve root. Its cell body is located at the dorsal root ganglion. The sensory neuron needs to come into the dorsal gray horn, depending on what type of information. From there, it moves off to certain regions of white matter depending on what type of information. If it's for fine touch or vibration or proprioception, it goes up through the dorsal column medial lumniscus pathway. If it's about unconscious proprioception, it's gonna be the spinocerebellar uh, spino th spino pathway going to the cerebellum. If it's for pain and temperature, it's going up via this pathway and this is called the spinothalamic pathway. All right, now let's talk about motor signals. So a motor signal is going to be coming down from the brain or brain stem, which means we need to start here. We started with information coming in. We need to start with information coming from the brain going down. So the white matter tracks. All right. If it's conscious information to tell your limbs to move, it is coming down via these particular tracks here. So we're going to have information coming down from the brain. It's conscious information and it's telling our limbs to move. Okay, coming down telling our limbs to move. But what if we want to tell, so skeletal muscle, what if we want to tell the skeletal muscle of our trunk to move? It's here. Right there. So again, conscious still. Limbs to move here, trunk to move here, okay? This is called the, these both are called the corticospinal tracks. Corticospinal tracks from the cortex to the spine. Now, what if it's not conscious movement, okay? What if, for example, it's reflexive movement? What if you see a light and your head turns reflexively, for example? What if you're climbing a tree and you reflexively grip as you climb that tree. This type of information is going to be moving through this area here and this area here. And again, this is information coming down and it's unconscious. But the important thing here is that these unconscious tracks have multiple names. Reticular spinal, rubrospinal, tectospinal tracks. They're older tracks, that's for sure. All right. Once the motor signal comes down through these white matter tracks, they need to jump into the gray matter. Now the gray matter for motor movement is in that area there and that area there. So that means the ventral gray horn, we have the dorsal gray horn here. We've now got the ventral gray horn here. Ventral gray horn here. This is where motor signals are synapsing. One neuron synapses with another. Now, if it's for limbs, synapsing there. If it's for the trunk, it's synapsing there. And the motor neuron is gonna be coming out here, there. So what that means is this nerve root has sensory information coming in and motor information coming out. So it's called a mixed spinal nerve. All right, so we've done sensory in, we've done motor coming out, but last thing is there's this little area here. This little area here is called the lateral gray horn. And the lateral gray horn contains presynaptic, presynaptic sympathetic neuron bodies. So sympathetic neuron, part of the autonomic nervous system, fight or flight. This sends a signal, unconscious signal, automatic signal, to your heart, to your digestive system, to your lungs, to the smooth muscle around your body. So all this unconscious contraction of muscles and releasing of substances from glands coming from this area here, and this will send a signal out. But it doesn't go through here, it goes through here. And this is called the paravertebral ganglion, also known as the spinal ganglia. 
and this goes up and down the thoracic and lumbar region of your spinal cord and that sends sympathetic signals out to your organs. I've done a whole video on the sympathetic nervous system and talk about that, so feel free to watch it. So overall, what's the take home message? All right, take home message is this. You've got gray matter, white matter. Gray matter is where the neurons synapse. White matter are simply the highways. All sensory information comes in through the dorsal nerve root at the back. All motor information comes out the ventral nerve root at the front. That's called the dorsal gray horn. That's called the ventral gray horn. That's called the lateral gray horn. Even though I've drawn it up with motor on this side and sensory on this side, they're both on both sides. This is just to make it a little bit neater, that's all. Different types of information are sent down different highways. That makes sense. And they sign up in different areas. That also makes sense. This is a quick summary of the spinal cord.